Welcome to the book party at the Grove with yours truly, African American Bibliophile for Life, Baba Kojo Urusu. I, I want to let people know how the subject matter in the books relates to them and is applicable to current issues, current events. My goal, another of my goals is to inspire people to want to know more about the subject matter in these books. I also want to encourage people to share what they learn from the books with family and friends, inspire people to love, to read, and to develop their own personal libraries. So a, these are the primary things that I want to accomplish as a result of sharing my uh, collection of books by and about people of African descent. I have uh, a philosophy that says that whether it's from dead trees or dancing electrons, I want people to keep reading. Uh, by an innocent journalist to identify his alma mater, the great Malcolm X bluntly responded, books. That was his alma mater. Whenever, wherever he went, he had his books to, to demonstrate his points. If you want to learn new things, try reading old books. And the one thing that I remember from somebody, I'm not sure where I got this from, and somebody knows, let me know, and I'll give them <laughs> credit. See, the book does not have to influence everybody to be influential. Influence is not always measured by the number of people a, a work may reach, but who it reaches. And I can remember, like, uh, Mein Kampf, or Darwin's Origin of Species, or Freud's Interpretation of Dreams, or David Walker's Appeal. And then, of course, there's Alex Haley's Roots and the Diary of Anne Frank versus Harriet Tubman's Diary of a Slave, slave Girl, which is a story that's as potent and as impactful as Anne Frank's. But these are some of the books that many people have not read, but these books have influenced uh, decision makers. And I love the idea that reading is how people install new software in their brains. So... Again, for me, it is uh, a labor of love to even stop to think about it and share this with people. Uh, and I remember Dr. John Henry Clark, one of my, uh, one of the greatest thinkers in this country, he says that it is impossible to continue to oppress a consciously historical people. So that, between him and Toni Morrison, has kept me grounded in why and what I'm doing. And I thought I would start off, since we're talking about books, to start off with one of the most important bibliophiles in the history of this country when it comes to books by and by people of African descent. His name was Arthur Alfonso Schomburg. Schomburg was an African Puerto Rican who came to the country in the 19th century. And I want to share with you, if I can, uh, what inspired him. This is from a book, a young adult book, picture book, written, uh, it's about three or four years old, beautiful illustrations. The book uh, talks about what happened to him uh, when he came, when he was in Puerto Rico. He says when he was in the fifth grade, his teacher told him that Africans, uh, that Africans' sons and daughters had no history and no heroes worth talking about. Instead of hanging his head in shame, he decided to find out if she was right or wrong, if she knew what she was talking about. He knew his people must have contributed something over the centuries in history that the teacher had not, uh, did not know and could not teach. His questions lingered on. Where is our historian? Where is our historian to give us our side? He asked. Who will teach our people our own story? Still a boy, he took on the role of historian because he had to know, he had to know the truth. He said, I wanted to find out what my own racial group had contributed. He could not get this hands on enough books. No one book told the whole story, so he, he haunted rare bookstores. Most of what he bought was cheap because white collectors considered it junk. Still, what he hunted 
was not easy to find, but now and then he would find a prize. And one of the prizes he found was lost for hours in books when Arturo discovered Benjamin Banneker's almanac. He studied all he could about this self-taught inventor, astronomer, and draftsman. Arturo beamed as he read that Banneker laid out the boundaries for Washington, D.C., and that he built the first clock ever built in America. Where were the monuments to this genius, he thought. In his search for black history, Arturo, he hadn't changed his name to Arthur at that time, had to wade through much misinformation that branded Africans as less than to justify our captivity. I never use the S word or slave word as captivity. You never define yourself by imposed conditions. The system was based on skin color, superiority, and inferiority. Arturo came to realize that Europeans aimed to erase all African history except bondage from the captives, from our captivity. Schoenberg chased the truth and found African roots in the family tree of an artist, ornithologist, and naturalist, John James Audubon, who wrote the book, Birds of America. As a boy, Arturo read the novel, The Three Musketeers, but he had no idea that the author, Alexander Dumas, was of African descent. Again, more, more is in the books than we have any, we can realize. His collection outgrew his ability to handle it. He offered to sell it to the New York library system, but they didn't have enough money. So the Carnegie Corporation bought the entire collection for $10,000 in 1926 and donated it, donated his entire collection to the New York Public Library. Schoenberg's collection was housed in the 135th Street branch in Harlem, which is in New York, of course. The collection included about, included more than 5,000 um, books, several thousand pamphlets, plus priceless prints and papers. Never again, he said, would a teacher dare tell a black child that the black man had no history. Here we see pictures of the 135th Street Library when in 1910, when it was totally segregated, and in 1920, when black children were allowed to attend. And here's today. Today, the Harlem Library bearing Schoenberg's name has more than 10 million items by and about people of African descent. And here's a picture. Schoenberg says the African-American Negro must remake his past in order to make his future. So this is a story of my hero and one of the first black bibliophiles in the country. And, and by the way, the word bibliophile, this big word it just means love of books. Biblio means book and file means love of. Arthur A. Schoenberg, Puerto Rican of African descent, born January 24, 1874, passed away June 10, 1938. So this is just one of the things, that, one of the books that we can talk about that I wanted to bring to your attention today. Uh, books have been uh, a part of the African diaspora, or Africa, period, for thousands of years. Here's a wonderful book on, from Timbuktu. And what's so important about Timbuktu is that there were thousands, hundreds of thousands of manuscripts saved by Africans in the desert. And the land there was, the temperature of the place was conducive to preserving manuscripts. And here's a book, uh, forget the title, because I didn't write the title, but it's a fantastic book by a librarian in the 21st century who saved Used, he, he put himself at risk to save an additional 35 to 40,000 books that were about to be destroyed in the desert in Timbuktu. Books come in all shapes and sizes and all colors and books. Uh, here's a book on books. 
showed you how a book is put together, uh, identifying all the parts. And so this is somebody, you know, who, as you can tell, are really into books, else you wouldn't have a book on books, okay? When it comes to black people in the library, here's a book on the black librarians in the 21st century. Now, we won't have time to go through all of this, but I just want to give you a taste of what's out here. This is a book written by a friend of mine uh, a long time ago called The Gatekeepers of Black Culture. These are black-owned publishers in the United States. And I didn't learn any of this in kindergarten or college. I had to find this out for myself. The, the best education you can have is what you get after you finish formal education. So this is just a taste of what I will be doing, attempting to do at the book parties at the Grove. Uh, until we meet again, keep reading. Thank you.